introduce Dr. Starrett Mercer, who is the incoming incumbent for the Chris Spencer Foundation Professorship in Special Education Learning Difficulties Dyslexia. Dr. Mercer. Thank you. Delighted to be here. I went very low tech today. It's 10 <laughs> minutes, so <laughs> no slides necessary. Um, it's a brief talk. Um, so I'm going to focus on kind of three aspects of the mandate of the professorship and my plans for the upcoming year. Um, the first is pursuing a research program in the field of learning disabilities um, with an emphasis on reading and related writing difficulties. Um, <clears throat> that's essentially my core research program. A lot of that works in the area of curriculum-based measurement, um, which is a paradigm that developed kind of in the late 70s as a method to evaluate students' progress toward meeting um, individualized education plan goals. Um, it's grown beyond that to be um, a method of identifying students in need of educational supports, um, to monitor their progress during intervention, um, and beyond that to evaluate programs and conduct research you know, that incorporates formative assessment. Um, <clears throat> My second main area is just theory-driven evaluation of academic interventions. Not necessarily what works and what doesn't work, but why do different things work? Uh, because that gives you a framework to be able to evaluate, you know, even in the absence of no information, would this be the sort of program that would tend to be effective um, for students based on the content that's included in it? Um, for the upcoming year, in the area of curriculum-based measurement, um, I'm just embarking on a project um, refining some written expression um, CBM assessments. Um, and the area of written expression CBM is not as well developed as the area of reading. Um, reading is a little bit, well, it's more high interest, a little bit easier to assess because generally um, the student's response is dictated in part by the uh, reading materials that are in front of them. In the area of written expression, um, typically you don't have kind of grade level prompts. I mean, you might give a child a writing task um, and possibly some constraints on time limits and then you have to figure out what to do with it. And that's essentially um, what the project will um, work on. For early writing, um, just students' productivity um, and transcription skills, just the ability to get something on paper um, seems to be the primary limiting factor. Obviously it becomes more complex as students start to attend to genre and other aspects of writing. Um, so to figure out a way of actually scoring some of these writing samples, uh, we're going to look at um, computerized discourse analysis. So essentially you can enter um, writing samples in, get a variety of metrics uh, based on uh, lexical diversity, um, referential cohesion, other aspects of writing that aren't easily hand scored, which is some of the more traditional measures. And it's essentially wide open at this point. We're just looking at the basic validity. Um, to what extent do those metrics uh, capture or um, correspond with what uh, raters would evaluate on those writing samples? And to what extent do they serve as just a general indicator of writing performance? Um, so if we give a student a writing sample and score them with these different measures, to what extent would um, students who score poorly on that also score poorly on a variety of writing tasks? And to what extent would um, those metrics capture growth in writing skill over the course of a year? The second main aspect related to that is in the area of individual reading fluency interventions for the upcoming year. Um, for a while I've been very interested in the extent to which um, incorporating vocabulary instruction um, in reading fluency interventions, which uh, a prototypical one would just be repeated readings. Kids would read um, a short, um, simple passage for them several times until um, a certain degree of automaticity is gained. To what extent would broadening that to incorporate discussion of concepts, um, trying to keep some of that consistent over time, would that actually improve reading comprehension more than just improving um, text reading automaticity? All that stuff's in, in project or in progress. So those are my main projects. I also supervise a variety of students on um, mostly reading intervention studies using single case design. As an example of some projects that are underway, I have um, a student currently seeing the extent to which providing students reading fluency intervention in French for students in French immersion programs would have kind of cross-linguistic effects. Would that also improve their English reading fluency even though that's not being targeted? Um, another project is looking at the extent to which incorporating student choice uh, of materials and reading fluency interventions 
um, which kind of sounds like a no-brainer. You think people would do that, but actually in reading fluency intervention, people focus a lot more on just the difficulty of the text because um, they want to make sure that the texts aren't too difficult. Uh, but we know that incorporating choice can improve student motivation and so on. So that's one project related to it. Um, and a third is looking at um, upper elementary students and ways to incorporate um, instruction in decoding of uh, multisyllabic words in the context of reading fluency intervention, if that will assist them in developing automaticity on informational text and improve comprehension. So that's one aspect of the mandate in terms of the, the research. One other aspect is just community engagement um, in terms of encouraging good instructional practices and intervention in schools. Um, recently, I've started working with the Learning Disability Association of Vancouver. Um, it's still very much in the early phases. Um, so far, we've spoken a lot about um, their assessment model and really formative assessment model, ways that they can see the extent to which the services they are providing to students are effective. They serve about 200 students per year and provide um, several hours of individual intervention per week. So they have a pretty robust, robust model in terms of uh, service delivery. Um, to grow in that area, you need to actually show that you're having an, out, an impact. Um, I believe they are, but you know we need some data in that regard. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm excited about it for several reasons. One, it provides an opportunity for students to um, work in that setting and gain some experience. Um, and we have overlapping research interests. Um, beyond the program evaluation, some questions they're interested in are to what extent um, do you get similar outcomes when you provide um, interventions small group versus individually? Obviously, if you can get similar gains in small groups, then you've increased your reach and impact. Um, and I hope that you know over the course of this year and upcoming years, we can work together to um, address some of those research questions. Um, the, the last aspect of the mandate that I'll focus on is just um, adapting graduate courses, teaching practicum placements in these areas. I already do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I teach courses in um, curriculum-based uh, measurement, which essentially that course, the way I think about it, is it's a course on data-based individualization of um, academic interventions. Ways that you can, um, for students who aren't responding to packaged intervention programs, um, that you can essentially experiment and find something that will work for the student and show that it works, you know, based on diagnostic assessment and ongoing progress monitoring. Um, so they, in that course, they get that content and also do that with cases. Um, it's a required course um, in some of the concentrations for special education and also school psychology. Um, one thing that I really enjoy in that course, a lot of the students are um, teachers and they have flexibility around those projects where essentially the requirement of the project is to incorporate formative assessment in something that you do and see if it's working. <laughs> and it's really uh, amazing to see teachers incorporate those skills in class. Um, and one, see the impact that they're having, and two, being able to communicate that with administrators and other people to hopefully advocate for more time to do those sorts of things um, in future years. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Before you go away, yes. does anyone have a question for Sarah? I have one. I'm curious about yes. whether you're working with a particular age group in the schools, or what's the mm -hmm. what's the range that would be relevant for your work? Right. Um, I, I mostly work in elementary. <laughs> Um, in part just based on the notion of um, just it's easier to fix problems before they become huge. <laughs> that, that, that's in part the focus. But I am interested in older students um, and particularly in the area of writing. You know, I, I think some of these issues related to um, writing assessment, particularly for students in secondary, where it really is genre-based and quite complex, um, it'll be interesting to explore those issues. We don't necessarily have plans to do it yet. <laughs> um, for that project, we're mostly focusing on upper elementary, but that's definitely something I'm interested in. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Oh, yes. yes. Do you work in private and public schools? I, I do. Um, in school psychology, many of the practicum placements are the Catholic independent schools. 
um, just due to historical um, association with the program. Um, so that, that's been one aspect. Um, with the partnerships with um, LD Association of Vancouver, um, it's a little bit of both. <laughs> Um, they provide some of the stuff on site. They also have partnerships with several um, VSB schools to run after school programs. And I believe they have some sites that are in community centers as well. So, and have you noticed any difference between private and public? Or do you analyze your data that way? I don't. In general, most of the studies that I do in intervention um, would have a, a within student design. So essentially comparing their progress with intervention to how they were doing before. Um, so it, it very much is um, a, a focus on the techniques themselves and not necessarily the setting. Um, although it is an interesting question, for sure. <laughs> Stuart, thanks very much.